Hey, what's going on, people? I'm Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Norris Nemesis. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That way it helps YouTube's algorithm push out this content and more people can get a hold to it. Um, I appreciate y'all for subscribing. I appreciate the donations. I appreciate everything. Um, new channel members, welcome to the family. And... Um, Let's get into it. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about future faking. And basically future faking is when a narcissist promises you a future. It might be marriage. It might be children. It might be moving in together. It might be them letting go of an ex. It might be anything that'll keep you holding on anything that'll give you hope because the main thing that keeps you in a relationship or entanglement with a, a narcissist is hope whether it's hope for a future hope for a change hope to have kids um, they basically use your deepest desires to keep you in a situation with them um, I know my narc, my ex narc, on on that motherfucking, she on on me. Um, she used to use like marriage, and kids, and all that stuff to kind of, you know, keep me baited in, because I have a daughter. It's not with the narc, um, but I always felt like I let my daughter down and I let myself down because. I didn't bring her up in a two-parent household, which me and her mom, we get along fine now, but that always bothered me in the back of my mind. And the ex-narc knew that because you notice they want to know everything about you. They want to know, hey, what you been through, where your family from, how were you raised, this, this, and that, because they're gathering intel on what events to use to manipulate you. They want to know what happened to you as a kid. They want to know what happened to you in your early adulthood. They want to know your most traumatic events because they want to capitalize on these events. And I know it sounds sick, but this is the reality. Um, like I said, my ex-narc used to you know, preach this marriage stuff and all that. And I wasn't thinking about marriage. I wasn't thinking about no kids. Like I said, I already got a kid. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking about any of that. But if somebody constantly, you know, implements something in your head or put it in conversation, constantly mention it, subconsciously, you're going to, you know, it's, it's going to stick. So... I was talking to a friend of mine one day and I was like, man, this girl keep mentioning marriage and cause she kept mentioning it. She kept sending me videos, uh, pictures of wedding rings, a ring size, all this stuff here. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But at the same time, I'm talking to a friend of mine about it. And he's like, man, that girl wants you to marry her. And I'm like, man, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? But she kept mentioning it. And the way that he got me, and you know, this, you know, I was still under the love bomb, still under the spell, everything like that. The way that he got me, um, or she got me, really, he mentioned, he was like, if somebody else, you know, proposed to her or gave her what she's asking for, how would you feel? You'll feel, you know, your heart will be broke, you'll be messed up, you'll feel like you lost out on something right and at the time my answer was yeah you're right and i said man you really think she want me to marry her? you really man that's why she's throwing these hints out and even his wife said the same thing man when a woman is bringing up these little hints they want you to ask to marry her. so what did i do i went out and bought a three thousand dollar engagement ring i think it was like a carrot a carrot and a half something like that um big Big ring, a ring a rapper would give somebody. Um, so we were going through it, arguing, 
And it was at a point where I was already tired of the arguing and the back and forth because I didn't understand why we were arguing. Like I said, I didn't find out she was a narcissist until I, I discarded her. I'm thinking we're going back and forth and I can't get any cooperation because she doesn't trust me because she's been hurt and this and this, the picture that she painted, you know, the victim picture. So what I did, I sent her a picture of the ring. Again, going back to my last video, now I'm doing more. Now I'm trying to get her validation. It's all ties in and this is what they want and this is how they know they got you. So I send her a picture of the ring. I say, man, I don't, I don't know, you know, why you're having these trust issues. I've been nothing but faithful to you. I've been a stand-up guy to you, this, that, and the third. And I sent her a picture of the ring, and I sent the text. This is what I'm on. I don't know what you on, but this is what I'm on to show you that I'm serious. Again, listen to the words I'm saying to show you that I'm serious. So subconsciously, I am searching for her validation because of the little corporation that I'm getting from her. Do y'all see how this ties into my last video? Now I'm trying to prove myself. I'm trying to prove my worth because now I forgot my worth because I've been tricked out of knowing what my worth is. But anyway, I'm sent to the message. I'm like, this is what I'm on, whatever, whatever, just to show you that you know, I mean what I say, and I'm serious. Once again, I'm confirming to her subconsciously. I She has me. I got you. So, send her this message. I think we have, we go to dinner either that night or a couple days after. And, mind you, she's been pumping this wedding shit up. She's been talking this, talking that. She's going full fledged fucking bridezilla and her words were is that an engagement ring and i'm like nah motherfucker it's a wrestling ring we go on to the royal rumble of course it's a fucking engagement ring like i'm like yeah and her words was oh well you need to slow down a little bit and i'm like motherfucker come again slow down in my mind, I'm like, what you mean slow down? You, you're the reason why I went and bought this. But see, remember what I told y'all. Narcissists know they only have a certain amount to offer you. So now they got to get back in control of the pace. Because they know once you get to a certain, once you, okay, once you marry somebody or once you, you know, take your relationship to the next level, especially especially marriage, you're going to demand more from that person. More responsibility comes with being married to somebody. More commitment is required to be married to somebody. More trust is required to be married to somebody. Um, guidance you have to be able to accept guidance. You have to be able to accept discipline, rules, principles. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I'm naming, honor, integrity, everything that I just named a narcissist does not possess. So now they want to control the, the, the pace of the future. They want to be able to breadcrumb you so they can get their stuff together on their end. Because if they're able to control the pace, they can slow it down. They can give you what they want to give you. They can accept what they want to accept from you. Because when you give them more, you're going to subconsciously, subconsciously expect more from them. They know that. They also know they don't have that much to give. So they have to breadcrumb it to make it look like they're giving you more than they're really giving you. Do y'all follow me? So you got to watch out when people future fake you 
and you're not getting your receipts, you're not getting your product, because you have to remember, judge of fruit, judge of fruit, drug, judge people based off of the fruit that they bear, which means what do they have around them that they produce? What have they produced to you? What have they given to you? What have they shown you? You're hoping for this marvelous future with them. You're hoping for this cooperation with them. You're hoping for loyalty, understanding, trust, commitment. Have they shown you any trace of what you're asking for and what you're expecting outside of the love bomb phase? I'll answer for you, no. You got to start base you got to start judging people based off of what they're showing you, not off of what you want them to show you. You have to start basing people off of what they really are and not what you want them to be because that's basically what we do with them. We we pick up the fantasy the fantasy of being married to them, the fantasy of them being faithful, the fantasy of them being cooperative, the fantasy of them not being difficult without there actually being evidence of them being any of these things. So we get tricked into putting them on a pedestal that they never should have been placed on in the first place. And a lot of y'all are still holding on to that fantasy. That's where you're going to stay stuck. And I always tell people, and I'm going to go into this uh, deeper in another video. When you're dealing with a narcissist, because a lot of y'all know y'all are dealing with a narcissist, but y'all still haven't made that disconnection yet. Write down all the bad stuff that they've done to you. Every argument, every feeling, every result, every consequence. Write it down. Put the date by it. Write it in big, bold-ass letters. Every time you start rationalizing their behavior, every time you start reminiscing, every time you start thinking about them, every time you start thinking about going back to that hell that you were blessed enough to escape from, read that list. With a clear mind and ask yourself, is any of this shit the way that I'm supposed to be treated? Do I deserve any of this? Do I want to live the rest of my life with these things happening? And what you'll notice about that list is the shit gets worse and worse. Everything you write down gets worse than the last thing you wrote down. Especially if you write it down in order. Everything gets worse. So you start having to think like, nah. It, 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 this ain't what it is. This ain't what it's supposed to be. That lady hyped me up to go buy a $3,000 ring because, first of all, they think you're a liar just like them. And she even said, out of all the dudes, and that should have been a, a red flag, out of all the dudes who said they wanted to marry me, you're the only one who actually went and bought a ring. When I got out of the relationship, that was confirmation too that you'll never find anybody like me because you haven't ran across anybody like me because I said I was going to do something and I went and did it. Matter of fact, I went above and beyond. But see, I wasn't paying attention. You know what I'm saying? That lady hyped me up to do something. I went and did it. And she had to pump the brace. Oh, shit, he really went and bought this. He really went and did this. Hold on, let me let me regain control. And that's another way they manipulate you because you go buy the ring, right? And this goes for any future faking situation. I'm speaking on mine. You go and buy the ring. If you're not in the right state of mind, you'll start thinking, well, damn, I'm not worth marrying. I'm not worth this. I'm not worth that. I'm not worth. And you start further tearing yourself down and you become more susceptible to their manipulation because they're living up here. You're in a state of confusion. You're in an emotional state. 
You got to watch out for this stuff. If somebody is promising you something and there's no actual evidence moving toward that, you need to disregard what they're saying. You need to identify that it's future faking. Um, I'm going to go deeper into this video. Probably going to do a part two to it and break it down a little bit more. But y'all pay attention when people are giving y'all statements without results. That's how you keep from getting manipulated. Where is the actual evidence of what you're telling me? And a lot of people say, man, it's a paranoid way to live. Now, a paranoid way to live is with a goddamn narcissist. The world that we live in, so many people are being untrue, fake, uh, being what social media wants them to be. No, I need receipts for what you're saying. I treat people just like I used to treat people when I was in the streets. No, I, I need receipts on what you're telling me. You want this and this and this? Okay, I need to see your ID. I need to see this and this and this. I need, I need to hear about it. I need to feel it. I need evidence on what you're telling me. That's the same way you need to start dealing with these folks. And when you start dealing with them in that way and you don't get no evidence... That is evidence within itself of what you're wrestling with in your mind. That they are a narcissist and they won't change and they are manipulating you. So you need to identify these traits. Um, I'm going to cut the video here. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. A lot of people are asking me where I'm from. I'm from Houston, from Houston, Texas. Um... I appreciate all the donations. If y'all would like to donate, uh, my info is in the description. I appreciate all the video requests. I'm trying to get to y'all. I'm almost done with the one-on-one -on -one system. I'm making some final touches on it, and it will be operational. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers. Y'all welcome to the family. I try to get to a lot of y'all's comments. It's getting up there, so don't think I'm ignoring you. It's a lot of y'all, and welcome. Um... Again, y'all make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Another day, another way. You ain't got to listen, but I know you heard me. Somebody please come quick and come.